Okay, the time is 6.30. I think we should go ahead and start. Hello, everybody. My name is Andrew Anderson. I'm the programming coordinator for uh, Big Media. And uh, this webinar, I'm going to show you how to do uh, some very basic art installation and also some basic uh, art uh, wrapping. Um, uh, so for the uh, Austin Studio Tour. Uh, so hopefully when you sell lots of work during this during the studio tour, uh, you'll be able to wrap the work for your, uh, for your collector and they can take it home safely um, and enjoy it forever. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Well, uh, if you have any questions, go ahead and put them in the Q&A. And uh, I'll try, uh, maybe I'll tackle some of the questions right on the fly. Um, most likely, I'll probably try to hit them up uh, at the end, uh, maybe the, the final 10 minutes or something like that. And so, yeah, I got a few things set up here. And like I said, uh, I want to teach you guys how to do some kind of basic uh, art installation. So we're going to hang four pieces uh, in a group uh, with equal spacing between each piece. Um, so let's call this our the wall that we'll be hanging on. So from one blue piece of tape to the next, that one right there, let's call that our wall. And that is uh, eight feet. Uh, just, you know, if you're taking notes at home. <laughs> one of the most important things um, about being an artist is, uh, you know, we spend so much time on the front of the piece of art, right? Uh, we spend hours and hours making this beautiful drawing or whatever, uh, painting and whatnot. But then we neglect the back. Um, the back of the piece is super important um, to ensure that the client uh, can enjoy the piece. Make sure that they can hang it safely in their home and enjoy it for not only them, but you know, potentially for generations, you know, their kids, yeah, they hand it down to their kids. Um, so I wanted to show you some of the things that I've come across over the years. Um, uh, you know, basically what yeah, over 20 plus years as an art installer, uh, I've grown to hate wires. I know it's easy. I know, uh, you know, it's just like a really quick solution, but wires are the enemy if you go to any museum or any kind of like really good art gallery they've given up on wires hang your art directly off of the d ring if you can see that or not I'm going to get in there yeah so these are d rings and if you it's just a little bit more math and i know everyone's super terrified of math i'm not a big fan of math either but i'm going to hopefully teach you some tricks to kind of get away from the math um, like I said, uh, over 20 years of installing art, you learn that uh, math is the enemy. Um, you get this math in your head and all the numbers start spinning around and um, three sixteenths and, you know, I don't know, it just goes on. You get them confused with three quarters and uh, it's just a nightmare. But there's some tricks that can kind of help alleviate uh, some of that fraction type math. Um, and hopefully I'll, I'll show you some of that. Uh, make life a little easier on you. Oh, well, so like I said, uh, hang your art off the D-ring. And to install a D-ring, uh, you measure from the top of the piece. This is the top of the piece, right? And you measure down. Now, typically, uh, well, I guess one of the standards, one of the rules, if you will, there's no actual real rules to any of this stuff. But typically what you want to do is that you want it about a third of the way down. Uh, in this case, I have it about six inches. So you measure six inches, you make a little mark right there, right on the edge of your piece, uh, albeit a canvas or a frame piece like this. Um, and uh, uh, we, and I, I guess I need to mention right from the get-go, this is a very basic class. Um, if you're hanging something that's 200 pounds, if you're hanging a giant mirror or something, there's a lot more things you need to take in consideration. Um, the kind of hardware. Basically, uh, 
there are so many different kinds of hardwood because there's so many different kinds of walls. You can be hanging on masonry, on sheetrock, different kinds of sheetrock, a, a half inch, three quarter inch. Uh, you can have metal studs or wood studs. There's a, a ton of variables there. But generally speaking, for the studio tour, uh, we're going to be dealing with sheetrock and probably wood studs. Nothing we're going to be hanging today requires a stud. It's just simple hardware right into the wall. Now, once again, if you're hanging something that's 200 pounds, you know, anything that's really above like 50 pounds, you need specialized hardware. All right, so back to where we were. Starting from the top, you measure down third of the way from the top. In this case, it's about six inches. Now, this is very important. Maybe I'll go on this side so you can see a little bit clearer. The D ring is at the measurement, not where the screw is. So you want the D ring at the measurement. And preferably, you want the inside of the D ring at the measurement. It will yield a more accurate result. Yeah, so don't measure. Uh, don't put the screw in where you measure down. You want the D-ring at that point. Excellent. Uh, preferably, do a pilot pull first uh, into your wood, and then put your screw in. The pilot hole will help with splitting of the wood, uh, and it'll just make your life uh, a, a lot happier. Uh, obviously, use the appropriate drill bit size for the screw that you're using. Excellent. So now that you have both the D-rings in, uh, now let's go ahead and talk about uh, the actual installation. Before you start putting a bunch of holes in your wall, make a plan. What pieces do you want where? Um, do that curatorial type work, you know? Um, do certain pieces relate to each other? If they relate to each other, maybe they should be hung a little bit closer. If they have no relationship, go ahead and give them some good space in between them so people can observe that piece on its own um, without being um, uh, without the other pieces invading their field of vision, right? So uh, if, they, if there's a relationship, maybe it's a diptych or a triptych, or maybe there's like some kind of conceptual uh, connection, those pieces should be a little bit closer. Um, and that's really kind of up to you uh, how close you want those pieces. Um, I generally don't like anything closer to each other than two inches, um, unless there's like a conceptual visual reason for them to be even closer. Maybe they're even flush to each other. Um, but generally speaking, two inches is about as tight as I like it. So uh, once again, make a plan, figure out which pieces you want where, and it doesn't hurt to go ahead and make a diagram. Go ahead and draw that out. You know, so here I have, I don't know if you guys can see that or not. So, you know, from this point to this point, yeah, I mean, it's eight feet. And now uh, the pieces are drawn in you know, simple squares and I have the measurement of the widths of each piece, right? So you measure the width, all right, so this one is 13 and a quarter. I went ahead and wrote that down on my diagram. That was 13 and a quarter. This one is 19 and a quarter. Go ahead and write that down on that piece, you know, and you go on, go, uh, go on as, um, you know, go on and go forth, I guess. <laughs> All right, excellent. So here comes the part that everyone dreads. It's the math part. So what I've done here, is I have the measurements of each piece. This one's 13 and a quarter. Uh, so I'm doing a terrible job of drawing here. Uh, 19 and a quarter, 12, and eight and three quarters. Now, once again, that's the widths. It's the widths of each piece, right? When you add all those together, came out to 53 and a quarter. So now we're going to subtract, if we were to push all these pieces flush to each other, completely flush to each other, the overall width would be 53 and a quarter inch. Now, we subtract that overall width from the overall width of the wall. 
And in this case, we're pretending that this is our wall that we're doing. It's uh, eight feet, 96 inches. So we're gonna subtract 53 and a quarter from 96 inches, and we get 42 and three quarters of an inch. So now we want, in this case, in this scenario, uh, we want equal spacing. We want the same amount of negative space in between each piece. The same amount of negative space. There's many ways of doing this. Um, and there's, there's, there's about as many ways to hang art and, and doing uh, clusters and, and, uh, of art as you can imagine. And this is just a, um, a kind of a suggestion, right? It's just, a, um, um, just an idea. Uh, of how, uh, like a pleasing way of hanging art for your show with an equal spacing in between each piece. All right, so once again, we're at 42 and three quarters. That's when we subtracted the overall width, uh, subtracted it from 96, which is our, our wall. We got 42 and three quarters. Then we divide that by five because we need space from one side of this piece so here's going to be a negative space, here's going to be negative space, so on and so forth, right? So that is one, two, three, four, five. We need to make five negative spaces between the pieces, if you will. So that's why we are dividing by five. Now, if you have more pieces, uh, so basically uh, it's the number of pieces plus one. So if you have six total pieces you're hanging on the wall, then six plus one is seven. So you're gonna divide it by seven and so on. So in this case, we divide by five and we get 8.55, which is pretty much eight and a half inches. Um, it, when, when you start getting into those really small uh, decimal numbers, uh, I, you know, I feel it's okay to kind of fudge it. <laughs> so I'm rounding it to eight and a half. Excellent. So now we know that in between each piece of art is going to be eight and a half inches. So we can go ahead and start on one side of the wall and work our way over, right? So let me grab my pencil. Let you kind of come over on this side so you can see you better. Okay. So uh, this is a fantastic tape measure. It's from uh, it's this brand called Lufkin. It's a self-centering tape measure. And you can get these at Lowe's uh, for I think about like six bucks, something like that. Um, you can also get them online, of course, and for some reason, they're more expensive online. What makes this such a great tape measure, uh, earlier I mentioned that we're gonna try to eliminate the math, right? A big component of art hanging is trying to divide numbers in half. Well, if you take a look at this tape measure, it does that for you. See that? Yeah, excellent. So here's five. Half of five is two and a half. Half of five and a quarter is two and five eighths. It does the math for you. And after a long day of installing art, this is going to be, this is an absolute savior. Uh, it keeps those fractions and all those numbers in your head. It keeps them nice and straight. It's really, really, really great. Oh, highly recommended. Uh, about six bucks at Lowe's. There we go. It's the Lufkin self-centering uh, self uh, tape measure. Excellent. Okay, so once again, uh, we know that it's eight and a half inches uh, from the uh, edge of our wall to the edge of our first art piece. I guess I should have taken all these out. I had done this before just to make sure, <laughs> just to make sure my math is right. And that's another thing uh, you have to kind of uh, forgive yourself sometimes when it comes to hanging art. You're going to mess up. And especially after a really long day of hanging art, you're, you're going to mess up. Um, that leads me to the hardware. Um, I particularly love this kind of hardware. Uh, it's the brass hardware with a little brass head to it. This is a hardened steel. Uh, nail. Did, uh, did it freeze? No. Uh, it's a hardened steel nail, so it's a very thin nail, and so it doesn't leave that much damage. It doesn't damage your wall nearly as much as some of the other hardware out there. 
And also this brass hardware, it's very accurate. Some of the other hardware, there's too much slop. There's too much play in the nail and the hook itself. And so this one tends to be very, very accurate. Once again, if you go to a lot of the museums and really good art galleries, they tend to be using this kind of hardware. And this one is rated up to, I believe, uh, 25 pounds. Oh no, 30 pounds, I was wrong, up to 30 pounds. So it's a, it's a, it's a really good uh, general hook to use for your lighter weight work. And also since we're hanging with two hooks, if you think about it, that's like kind of up to 60 pounds of holding uh, going on there because you're, you're, you're multiplying the, uh, the ability, right? Um, so in theory, you can hang up to 60 pounds with these two hooks. I wouldn't do it. I don't recommend it. Keep it under 50, maybe even 40. <laughs> All right, so here we go. So this is the hardware. And so uh, eight and a half inches over, you take your tape measure. I like to uh, pull the tape measure this direction towards the direction I'm measuring, I guess. I end up at eight and a half, I put it on my mark. And then I use the actual tape measure to make a little stuff on the wall. When you're holding a tape measure and trying to use it, a pencil to make your mark, that's just a recipe for disaster. Uh, it's, you know, you got this floppy thing, you're trying to make your mark, it's, it's just a real pain. Use the actual tape measure itself to make that little mark on the wall for you. Don't make a super dark mark. You're just gonna have to clean it up later. It's, yeah, it's just, it's just a pain. Make a light mark and you'll, and you know, plenty enough information there for me to, to follow. All right, so eight and a half over, that is the edge of the piece. Now, I want to measure from the center of the D rings. I, I prefer to literally measure from the screw to the screw, from the center of the screw to the center of the screw. In this case, it's 12 and 5 8, so that's going to be roughly uh, 6 and like 5 16. Yeah, yeah, 6 and 5 16 is half of from screw to screw, right? I'm sorry, I, I, skipped the, I skipped the process. I'm so sorry. What I forgot to do is find the center of the art. The art itself, in this case, it's 13 and a quarter, which is six and five eighths. From our mark over here, we want to measure to the center of the actual art piece. So now it's six and five eighths. And you make your little mark with the edge of the tape measure. Um, these are all tricks. Now you can do this on all on paper if you wanted to. Um, you're going to get super frustrated and your brain's going to get exhausted. Um, a lot of times art installation is more of an endurance type thing. Um, and, uh, and trying to be as accurate as you can while you're doing this endurance activity. So these are all tricks that kind of alleviates some of that stuff, alleviates the math. You know, when you're tired, the math gets bad in your head. All right, so we found the center of the piece, uh, six and five eighths, right? We made our mark. And now we're gonna measure from screw to screw, which is 12 and 5 eighths, which is six and 5 sixteenths. So we go from our center mark that we made earlier, and then we measure out uh, six and 5 sixteenths, which is a six and a 16th over a quarter. And we make a mark with our tape measure, like before, just kind of score the wall with your tape measure. And then you flip the tape measure and you do it again. Point the tape measure at six and five sixteenths, you line it up at six and five sixteenths, and then you make your mark. 
And now from that point to that point, it's 12 and 5 eighths, which was the same measurement as screw to screw. So we know that's correct. So now you're asking me why, why did I do that? I did that because had we gone off the measurement of the, of the actual width of the art, it doesn't account for the D-rings because the D-rings are actually recessed within the frame, right? They're, they're only recessed about a quarter of an inch, but they're recessed nonetheless. Had we gone off the edge, the, the anchor would have been installed to the edge of the piece and it wouldn't have worked. We need to accommodate for the recess, right? That little bit of a quarter of an inch. And my technique, I feel like it's particularly accurate. Okay, now here comes, uh, we figured out the uh, horizontal positioning of the art. Now we need to figure out the vertical positioning of the art. How high do we want it? The American with Disabilities Act, uh, I believe they suggest that all art be hung at 58 center. So the center of the art, the center of the art, be hung at 58 off the floor. And so this gives a, a good opportunity for people with disabilities, uh, shorter people to be able to view the art as well. So it's not so high that, oh my God, you know, sometimes I, I go to people's houses and we got art like hanging right off the ceiling. It, you know, that's, if that's your thing, that's your thing, that's great. But for public spaces, um, uh, you know, if you want to go to a dentist's office or a lawyer's office or, or any kind of a, a state office or, or, or something like that, you really need to go at 58 cents. Okay, so to do that, we go back to our center that we figured out earlier. And then we're going to measure off the floor. So we take the tape measure, we go down, right? And then we measure up. And then there's 58. And then you make yourself a little mark. Just a little mark. Don't make giant, giant hashtags or anything like that. You know, just a little mark. Excellent. So that will be the center of your art piece. Okay, so now we're going to measure the overall height of this piece. Uh, in this case, it's a square. So we know that um, it's 13 and a quarter, which is uh, six and five eighths. But we also need to measure the drop. And so from the top of the art piece to the inside of the D-ring is called the drop. And so since we installed this correctly, a lot of uh, uh, frame shops and a lot of uh, uh, art handlers don't do this. But if you, if you measure from the top of the piece to the inside the D-ring, we got it at exactly four inches. So once again, the overall half of the overall piece uh, is six and five eighths, and then the drop is four. Right. That's, that's like one of the few times you actually have to remember numbers in this system. Um, it's uh, transferring this number to the wall. All right, so here we go. Here's our 58. So now we're going to go six and five eighths, which was half of the overall height. And then the drop from the top, four inches right there. So this is the top of the piece. And then four inches down, that's where the D ring is going to go. All right. Excellent. Excellent. So now we've made marks. Uh, for the height of the D-ring. We've made marks for the width of the D-ring. Let's go ahead and make sure everything is level. Get yourself a nice level. Um, I particularly like levels with numbers on them. Uh, this is a task force brand. Uh, I believe it was uh, bought from Lowe's once again. Uh, I believe Lowe's has changed their brand now is, um, is a craftsman. And so now craftsmen is their, uh, the, are the levels that they carry with numbers on it. There's uh, all kinds of different levels for many, many different applications. I prefer a plastic level, believe it or not, uh, the inexpensive plastic level. Um, it doesn't scuff up your wall. 
Okay, good. It didn't scuff up the wall. <laughs> the aluminum levels, if you lean them up against the wall, they're going to scuff up your wall. Also, if you throw these levels in the back of your truck, they're probably going to bounce back and be okay. The aluminum levels, you bang them up, they're not going to be straight ever again. Um, so you have to, there's a level of care with the aluminum levels that I don't have time for. So I prefer the plastic ones, believe it or not. And I've had very little uh, uh, negative uh, um, effects from the plastic levels. All right, so yeah, so once again, uh, Task Force from Lowe's, I believe they're, uh, it's a uh, Craftsman now, and they're plastic with, the, with some numbers on it. So uh, we go to our center, and then we put, I like to use the, the tip of my pencil, put it right on my mark, and then I rest the level right on my mark. This helps ensure accuracy, right? And so there we go. The level is now nice and level. It's right in the middle. And then I'm going to do a very small hash mark, a little small dash right there, and dash where uh, connecting my other marks. I can make them a little bit darker so you guys can see them. Um, I'm going to have to paint this entire gallery later anyways. <laughs> Excellent. So that means this is where one anchor is going to go, and here's where the other anchor is going to go. We have our fantastic brass anchors. Here they are. I love them so much. Line it up so the bottom uh, is right at your mark, and then just tap it in. There you go. And for sheetrock, that goes in really easily because these are sharp and very strong. Uh, very strong nails. There you go. Now you can double check yourself if you feel like your you know things got a little away from you. Went awry. Make sure those are nice and plumb, that they're nice and up and down. And you can measure off the bottom. And my level says they are level. We are good to go. Excellent. And so now you can hang your art. Another trick of the trade um, is to hold the D-rings in between your fingers. So you have control over them. Now, obviously it's gonna be much more difficult for a larger piece, um, but uh, for these little small pieces, it's kind of nice to hold them in between your fingers so you can kind of feel and you can kind of control them. A lot of times these D-rings are flipping and flopping all over the place. And then, you know, with my, uh, sense of touch or whatever, I can hang that blindfold if I wanted to. All right, so that was our first piece and we can check level on that too, just make sure. And she's good, and she's good, excellent. Now let's go ahead and do another one. You know, just kind of get you guys really, um, you know, that repetition uh, so you, so you, you um, get that kind of stuck in your head. So we know that our space between these pieces are eight and a half inches. And so that means from the edge of this piece, it's gonna be eight and a half inches uh, to the next one, right? So we take our tape measure, we push it up against this guy. We don't push too hard on the art because there is a lot of play in these. I don't know if you can see that or not, but you, know, you can really move these things around. Make sure that's lined up with your, with your edge mark. Okay, and now push that up against the edge and go ahead and make a mark for eight and a half. Now this is the edge of the next piece. Uh, so now we basically do a repeat of everything that we did for the first one for the next one, right? We figure out the overall half of the overall width. In this case, it's uh, 19 and a quarter. So that's uh, nine and five eighths. And so we go from the our edge mark, go over nine and five eighths. You know, pay attention to how you hold your tape measure, right? Nine and five eighths. You line that up with that mark, and then you use make a little scuff on the wall. There you go. And that is the center of this piece. Now let's figure out uh, the the spread, the spread of the hardware. So you measure from the center of the screw to the center of the other screw. Uh, which is uh, 18 and 5 eighths, which means uh, that is uh, 9 
and five sixteenths. Oh God, I know sixteenths. All right, so <laughs> nine and five sixteenths. One, two, three, four, five. There we go. And make your mark. You do it again on the other side. Nine and five sixteenths. One, two, three, four, five. There it is. Nine and five sixteenths. Excellent. Cool. Now let's go ahead and do it again. Let's measure from, uh, you know, we figured out the spread of the hardware. Now we need to figure out the height of the hardware. So go off the bottom, measure down, and we make our 58. Do a little mark for 58. Excellent. Excellent. Now we got to figure out the drop, the drop of the hardware. So we're going to measure off the top of the piece to the inside of the hardware and that is six inches six inches excellent both of them are correct and then half of the overall height uh, in this case it'll be nine and five eighths so nine and five eighths is the top of the piece we go off of our 58 nine and five eighths right there 58 is how high we want the center of the art piece nine and five eighths will be the top of the piece and then we measure down to the drop. And down to the drop was six inches. Make a little mark. Excellent. Now that we know the uh, horizontal positioning, we, we made a, a, a mark for the vertical position. Let's go ahead and connect everything. Get yourself your nice level. Go ahead and use the pencil to anchor the level on it. Drop the level physically onto it, not so hard to, to break the pencil, of course. Uh, level it out, and the level is just about there, and we're good, right there. So the bubble's in the middle. Go ahead and make your mark. Left and right. Right and left. Excellent. And we know where the anchors are going to go. Now, hardware. You can go to Lowe's, you can go to Home Depot, you can go to Michael's, you can go anywhere to get hardware. If you're going to be hanging a lot of art, I highly recommend going online and going to uh, United Manufacturers, which is a frame, uh, frame shop retailer. Uh, they sell hardware by the box, like by a lot. And um, you get a significant price break when you buy a lot of hardware. Um, so there's a United Manufacturers, and there's also a local company uh, out of San Marcos, which eludes my brain just a just second, but later I'll find it and I'll put it in the uh, comment section. Okay, so here you go. We got our hardware, and it's gonna tap her right in. Line it up, make sure the bottom is nice and lined up. Excellent. All right, do the next one. Okay, now it's in. Okay, let me hang this guy for you guys real quick and we'll check it. Oh, well, here. Let's first check. The hardware, make sure the hardware is nice and level. And the hardware is what? The hardware is good. Okay. Let's go ahead and hang the art. Once again, I like using a little finger pinching technique, I guess. And then I drop her right in. All right, let's test her out. Let's see how she looks. What's going on? It's not level. What happened? But the hardware was level. This is what I'm talking about. There's always going to be, uh, there's a million cuts uh, in, in art hanging. There's a million opportunities for mistakes. And a lot of them sometimes are not even your fault. So let's, let's go back. Let's figure out what happens. Okay. So I measured from top down. Right? 
and that was six inches, and this was six inches. So that's not that's not the problem. And then this was level. That's not the problem. What could it be? Guess what? It's actually the frame. In this case, I think you can see this. Let me see if I can try to replicate that. Uh, can you guys see that? It? No, I guess not. Well, this frame is actually bowed. And the bigger the frame, uh, especially with these uh, kind of inexpensive frames, um, I'm not you know, saying anything bad about Jerry's Artorama, but these are inexpensive frames and they tend to have you know, uh, some quality issues sometimes. Um, especially when it comes to the bigger ones. The frames might be bowed, they may not be perfectly square, uh, um, or something along those lines, you know? And all that will affect your end result. One good thing is that there is lots of slop. There's a lots of play within the hardware. And so you can move this hardware pretty close to uh, up to 3 16ths of an inch up or down. So you don't necessarily need to rehang the hardware on the wall. You don't necessarily need to put more holes in the wall. You might be able to just tweak the hardware just a little bit. You know, you drop one and you push the other one up. Let's see if that works. Let's give that a try. Let's see if that did the trick. Uh, we're really close. We're really close to getting that level. You know, a lot of people would be like, you know what, you're done. <laughs> but I'm a perfectionist, right? So we did what we can do. And you know what? I'm going to go ahead and move that hook. And judging by the bubble, I know that it's roughly about 3 16ths off. So that means I need to move this one up about 3 16ths. And I think we hit it. Money in the back. And you can even see, let me grab a camera so I can get you in here real close. Yeah, you see that gap right there? That's how you know that the frame is bowed. And so there's, there's always going to be uh, a million little weird, uh, little weird things like that that will affect the end result. But with this hardware, it leaves a very small hole. So it's easy to patch up um, with a white wall like this. You probably put a little bit of putty in there. You won't even know that that hole was there. All right, I'm going to go ahead and hang this last piece real quick uh, just so we can continue to move forward. I had already uh, done the measurements and, uh, and hung the hooks. earlier today. It's kind of like a cooking show, you know, like uh, they, they mix the cake and then they put it in the oven and then in the other oven, they pull out the finished cake, right? So here we go. All right, and just to show you that the math is correct, here's our negative space, eight and a half inches, right? Then we go again, eight and a half inches, right on the top. All right, now, if you're doing kind of a non-traditional hanging, you're going to have kind of non-traditional hardware too. Uh, and, you know, you may have wires. I, I, you guys already know how I feel about wires. And I also hate these things. These are a sawtooth hanger. But when you're dealing with a really lightweight piece of art, sometimes you have to use a sawtooth hanger. Um, do your best to put that sawtooth hanger in exactly center uh, of the width of the art piece. Uh, yeah, and just like everything else, we have to measure 
the draw, right? So we uh, we need to figure out the the width of the entire art piece, uh, eight and five eighths. Uh, ends up being uh, eight and five sixteenths. Oh wait, uh, yeah, here I am. I'm, I'm I'm going too fast, even for myself. You got to rem remember to add the gap, right? The negative space, which was eight and a half inches. So here's eight and a half inches. Make yourself a little mark. Something really light because you know there's a potential that people will see that that little mark. So you want to make it really light. And of course, you can always go back and erase it. All right, so there's our mark for eight and a half inches. And now we measure half of the width of the piece, uh, which will be four and five sixteenths, because this is a small piece. And we get four and five sixteenths. Use the tape measure, make a little scuff. There we go, that center of the art piece. Um, because we're not hanging off two D rings, we just need to find center, right? Um, and now we're going to figure out the height. So the overall height of this piece is uh, eight and three quarters, which is four and three eighths is half of the height. And then the drop, believe it or not, even with these sawtooths, you got to consider the drop. And in this case, the drop is going to be a quarter of an inch. So uh, what did I say? Four, um, four and three eighths. So we go uh, to our center. Oh, I forgot. Don't forget to put the 58, right? Measure off the ground, measure up, get your 58, bam. All right, so now it was four and five eighths was to the top of the piece, four and five eighths. And then it was a quarter of an inch, quarter of an inch uh, to where the nail is going. Not to the bottom of the hook, but this time it's actually to the nail. And I'm just going to use kind of a kind of a generic finish finishing nail. You guys can see that. All this stuff is available at your local, you know, big box hardware store. And we're going to hang that sawtooth right off the nail. It's good to have a, a, a general kind of finishing nail that has a head on it, right? So it doesn't uh, slide off the edge of the nail. Uh, some people will drive that nail in an angle. Um, I don't do that because that's going to affect the height of the piece, right? Because if it's in an angle, it's going to be higher than from where you marked from, right? So I go straight in, straight in like normal. Leave a little bit hanging so the sawtooth has something to bite. And there you go. And then these are, you just got a level. Yeah. There you go. Now, because this is not hung on two D rings, this guy will go wonky on you. It, you know, with the uh, with the guests coming in, the door opening and shutting, the slamming, the vibrations, the stomping, um, these pieces will go cockeyed. Right. Uh, here's a little pro tip: roll up. A little piece of blue tape and just kind of stick it back there, you know, make it small enough that no one will see it. And once again, nice and level. And just push the bottom in, and then that's going to help with the vibrations. Now I'm tapping on that pretty good, and it's not going anywhere. All right, cool. So I'm going to step back and see our installation, right? We have four pieces, four different sizes, but they all have equal amount of negative space in between them. This is a very classic, this is a very standard way of hanging art. Um, this is a very kind of professional way of hanging art. Like you, when you hang groupings like this uh, in a commercial space, they'll typically have uh, uh, equal amount of spacing uh, in between them, unless there's you know architectural features that you're trying to enhance and that, so on and so forth. You know, dealing with the interior designer, who knows what. All right, so you hung your show. It looks beautiful. Everything is level, and you're super. You cannot be happier. Someone comes in, and they are so impressed with your hanging skills <laughs> that they want to buy your art. Right? Well, no, they they want to buy your art because your art is super good. So, 
Um, I'm out of focus. Why am I out of focus? There we go. Are we back? No? Yeah, back in focus. So I'm going to show you uh, a couple of ways to ensure that this art gets to your client's house safely and so they can enjoy it for generations, right? All right, so earlier today, I got this beautiful drawing of a polar bear in a snowstorm. Isn't that gorgeous? All right. <laughs> and I just sold this to a client for $200. Um, first off, make sure your hands are clean. Wash your hands. Um, you know, for the sake of time, I'm not going to deal with that, right? Respect your art. Um, look at your art like your client looks at your art, you know? When your client sees your piece, they think you're a genius. They think you're the most amazing artist in the world. Treat your art the same way, okay? So wash your hands, treat it with respect, okay? Now, uh, glassine. Uh, glassine is paper. Uh, it's very smooth paper that's been processed in a very specific way with these rollers to somehow kind of align the fibers. And so it's a very slick, smooth paper. This is not wax paper. Do not use wax paper. Use glassine. Glassine will not, um, will not rub the surface of your art and it won't um, burnish it. It won't sand it. Don't pack your art in straight cardboard. Cardboard is abrasive. Um, cardboard will eventually damage your art. You need that barrier. You need some protection. And you can get glassine at just about any uh, craft store. Uh, I think I got this one from Jerry's Artorama. And uh, what's the brand on there? This is uh, Canson. You see that? Canson glassine. Uh, glassine is water repellent. Um, uh, it's also grease or oil repellent. It's not, it's not proof anything. You, you, you know, you're not going to wrap this thing in a piece of paper and dunk it in a lake or something like that and expect it to be okay. But it will help protect, right? Uh, it's also most glassines you're going to get from a, a craft store or an art store is going to be acid free. So this is how a lot of museums store their art. Uh, actually, my last job, uh, I wrapped a lot of art in glassine, just so much art. <laughs> All right. So you cut yourself a, a piece that will uh, completely encase the art with your nice clean hands and or gloves. <laughs> And you wrap it up. Wrap it up so it completely, it completely covers the art. Um, uh, sometimes uh, you cut a piece that's too small and it ends up not covering the entire piece. I'm sorry. You got to get yourself some more glassine. It's not the most expensive stuff in the world. You got to wrap your art fully, okay, to um, properly protect it. Uh, believe it or not, properly protect it from the cardboard that we're going to put it in. So this is just a very simple cardboard envelope. So you made yourself a drawing, you made yourself a print, uh, and now you want to protect it. So you put it in a cardboard envelope. Let me just grab a couple of pieces of tape that I have earlier. One second, be right there. All right. And uh, this is just basic blue tape that I cut to size. And we're just going to take the corners of the glassine envelope to the inside of the cardboard envelope. And now that drawing is not going to go anywhere. Um, two pieces of cardboard with a uh, box tape hinge. And now this guy's protected. Um, now you can do versions of this with much more substantial, uh, substantial materials. Uh, you can do uh, masonite or uh, melamine 
or not melamine, uh, masonite or oh, what's that wood? Lu Luan, Luan, I think. Um, and that will protect your art even more. Uh, I used to work for an art gallery and they sold very large prints. And I basically did a version of this with uh, masonite uh, and ship them. And I never had an issue. Of course, if you're gonna ship them, uh, I would recommend a much more substantial uh, uh, materials to protect it. But it's roughly the same thing. Do a little tape. And this guy's good to go. Give that to your client. He's going to be able to take it. He, she's going to be able to take it home and uh, and give it to a framer, put it in a frame and, and rock and roll. They're going to love it, right? And so that's a very simple way of protecting your drawings and prints uh, so your clients can get them home safely. Now, let's say you got really lucky. Not lucky. These are skilled and a wonderful, talented artist. It's not luck. Uh, luck is preparation and timing, I think, uh, combined in one, right? That's, that's, that's luck. It took a lot of preparation. So you sold a framed piece, or this could be a stretched canvas or something like that. Uh, if, wait, number one rule uh, uh, on top of everything, do not sell wet art. Your paintings have to be dry. If it's an oil painting, it's got to be months dry, believe it or not. It's got to be at least a month dry. Uh, acrylic painting's got to be like a couple of weeks dry. You got to have your pieces dry, 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 dry. Um, because I've had so many pieces get destroyed uh, uh, because they, you know, people wrap them up and then uh, you peel them off and half the painting comes off with the bubble wrap or whatnot. Another thing, don't use bubble wrap on the surface of any art piece, of any art piece. Bubble wrap is beautiful stuff, but it's also terrible stuff. Um, it's a very thin plastic that will stick to just about anything. And uh, take it from me, I've had experience with this. I wrapped a, an art piece before I knew better, and I wrapped it in a bubble wrap. The, the uh, collector left the painting in their car, and uh, the bubble wrap adhered to the surface of the painting um, and it was destroyed. There's, there's no coming back from that. <laughs> so uh, if it's a, a painting uh, in acrylic or oil, make sure uh, that it's 100% dry uh, and protect the surface before you wrap it. Now, you could use glassine. I've seen people use glassine. I, uh, that still makes me nervous. Let's use instead polyethylene. This is a kind of a typical um, plastic that painters use, plastic sheeting. Once again, this is from Lowe's. I prefer Lowe's over Home Depot. Lowe's aligned with my political stance. <laughs> Not that I haven't bought too much stuff at Home Depot, but I prefer to try those first, right? So you want to get polyethylene plastic uh, in the painting department. Uh, this one's particularly good. It's three feet by 50 feet. So it's a very manageable size for most kind of medium to small size artworks. And I cut a piece here already. Uh, what's really great about polyethylene is that uh, it has a fairly high molecular weight and uh, very few things stick to it. Um, that's why they use a version of polyethylene in like the food industry. It's very easy to clean. Um, these tabletops, I don't, I don't know if they're polyethylene, they might be polypropylene, uh, but it's within the same family of plastics. Um, also like uh, milk cartons are made out of uh, polypropylene or ethylene, I can't remember. Um, as, uh, yeah. And uh, the scientist that created either this one or the other uh, plastic said that it's a plastic more akin to wax than, than like say a plastic, like a hard plastic. And because of that almost waxy nature, few things stick to it. Uh, another great feature about polyethylene is that it's acid free. So this is a great way to store your art for a really long time. Uh, same thing with the glassine. Glassine should be acid free. 
um, you know, once again, buy it from a reputable, you know, arts supplier. Um, there are some glass scenes for like the food industry and that kind of stuff that come with pigments and that kind of stuff. I wouldn't trust that. Just get it from Michael's, get it from wherever, and then you should be okay. Dick Flick, Jerry's, Jerry's Art Aroma, so on and so forth. Okay, so you got your art piece. Uh, maybe it's framed, maybe it's not. Uh, wrap it in, uh, in some polyethylene plastic, which is very inexpensive and readily available. And I think I cut a much too big piece. Uh, one thing, uh, don't skip out on your box tape. I really love the Scott's uh, shipping tape. It just does a really great job. There's a lot of really cheap tape out there. And I've struggled with the really cheap tape before. And it's just not worth your trouble. All right, so you got this guy nice and wrapped up. It is protected. It will now be protected from the dreaded bubble wrap. Now this bubble wrap was whatever we had lying around, so it's not exactly the right size, but we will make do. And so you can kind of see how I'm wrapping. It's, you know, it's fairly basic stuff. Uh, this one comes pre-perforated. It's always hard to find the perforations, so I'm just going to cut it. Little trusty scissors. There you go. Leave enough material to wrap over and tape. Go ahead and do it again. I got a bit of the frame that's not protected. And there's the perforations I saw it. Okay. There we go. And then just like um, uh, just like uh, wrapping a Christmas gift or something like that, you know, go ahead and tuck in those ends. You know, make it look nice. Take pride in your work. You know, just like uh, you, know, you you spent so much time on this art piece. Let's go ahead and wrap it correctly. And that adds value to your piece and it helps with buyer's remorse, right? Like <laughs> the client thinks you're, you're a rock star. They, 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 they see how, how, how much care you're taking into wrapping your piece for them. And uh, they're just gonna love that piece even more. So you wrap that up, take the sides. Now that's good and secure. Now you could do a cardboard envelope, just like we did for the paper piece. Um, if this piece is going to be tra uh, traveling, uh, you know, in a car maybe or something like that for a long distance, but typically this will take care of you. Now I'm going to show you kind of a very basic, very basic and inexpensive way of shipping your art. All right. Uh, let me show you first that. There's a product already out there. There's actually several products already out there. This one's from Lowe's. Um, it is a TV picture box, right? But it's uh, it's only good for a certain size of artwork. So you take this and it kind of pulls out. And so you can kind of ship something based, not ship. I wouldn't use this for shipping, but if you have a large piece that's going to be traveling, um, you know, under your supervision or something like that, you know, in a car, you're going to a show or something, uh, you know, out of town, um, this would be a good uh, resource to kind of protect that piece while it travels. Um, but I definitely would not ship in this box. All right. So you got your piece. It's all wrapped up in bubble wrap. Let's, let's, uh, let's put it in a box to uh, kind of send away. So what I like to do is have the face down and the back up like that. And this is a piece of cardboard that is cut to the interior dimensions of a flat box. Uh, so this will fit inside the box, right? And so what I did is that I made measurements to be able to make flaps. These little flaps I can use 
to hold this piece in place, right? So there you go, you kind of center it in there and then use your good box tape. to tape it to the bubble wrap, all right? So now we got this, all right? So now let me show you the other component, the other part to this is our flat box. Now there are, there are several good resources for flat boxes in Austin. Um, I recommend EcoBox, believe it or not. There's two locations, one off of Brody, and I can't remember where the other one is. I think it's up north. Um, but they have a variety of boxes, fairly well priced, and you can also buy sheets of cardboard from them. Sheets of corrugated cardboard um, in a, a couple of sizes. I think this one's a three foot by four foot, and I think they may sell a four foot by eight foot. Um, and uh, once again, uh, reasonably priced. So now that we have this, we can put this guy in the box like that. And the cardboard that we attached it to now acts like a suspension system. So the artwork is not going to be vibrating and bouncing around within the box. So it's held nice and, uh, nice and tight right in the middle of the box. Make sure the box is big enough to accommodate your art and some airspace. We want to leave two to three inches um, around the artwork, you know, because these things are going to get tossed around, they're going to get beaten up. And these corners are going to get tossed around quite a bit too. Um, I don't care what, who you use to ship your art with, it, you know, they, they, still, they still treat it a little harder than you want to. Once you do that, you could, if you wanted to, Fill in the negative space with some uh, with some peanuts, maybe the bio biodegradable ones. Those, those are really nice. Everybody hates peanuts, but you know they're actually a good product. So you can fill in the negative space with some peanuts or uh, some foam or something along those lines. All right, and then we close her up. Don't skip on the tape. I'm going to skip on the tape right now. This is really just for showing show and tell purposes but yeah and there you go and i can shake this around and that piece of art is good and stable in there uh, i've used this technique many many times and um, i've had i've had no issues with it now if uh, a lot of times when it comes to shipping art not that i really want to get into shipping art because uh uh, because the studio tour is more about this like personal relationship you're going to be making with uh, with your collector and hopefully 99% of the time they're going to be buying it right off your wall but in the in the case that they love it so much but they're out of towners they can't take it with them um, there are other solutions to shipping your work this is a fairly inexpensive one um, the the artwork uh, plus the box and the whole system ends up being fairly light um, but there are pre-manufactured uh, shipping boxes um, and I will try to put some of those resources in the comments um, uh, in a second here. Um, and let's see here. What else, what else can I help you guys with? Uh, we went over uh, installing the work. Now, you know, once again, this is a very basic class. Um, a lot of you super creative and awesome people are going to want to do something way more elaborate than this, uh, you know, with the artwork, you know, kind of uh, above and below and, and, and doing some really creative hanging. Um, that is definitely a more advanced class uh, requiring more math, which is no one likes math. And, <laughs> and, um, and a very basic, uh, a basic uh, uh, I taught you very basic ways of how to protect your art uh, for shipping. Um, I think I'm going to go ahead and move over to the computer. Uh, or maybe I'll just pull the computer over here uh, so that I can get to some of y'all's questions. Let's see here. All right. So forgive me, I have a laptop and, uh, and my wife is so uh, lovingly helping me today. 
Um, yeah, I had a, had a few interns kind of fail on me at the last minute, but that's okay. I love them anyways. <laughs> so let's take a look. Uh, we have a comment from uh, Eileen. Uh, would love your advice on packing irregular paintings. Uh, yeah, you can go ahead and turn that off. Um, irregular paintings uh, with textured media. Mm, how do you keep the peaks from breaking? Yeah, that's gonna be an advanced class question. Um, it depends, there's so many factors. Um, what you could do is uh, if, you're, if you're into building crates and that kind of stuff, you can make a wood crate um, in such a way that the painting itself is attached to the inside of the crate, very similar to how we did with this. Um, and so the piece will be attached to the inside of the crate with screws uh, and you leave enough uh, physical airspace uh, so the, the painting doesn't touch anything. It, it won't touch anything, um, but it will be supported by the screws that are, that are holding it within the outside of the crate. I don't know if that made any sense. <laughs> so you take the painting, you physically attach it to the wood exterior of the crate from the outside with screws. Make sure that the crate is big enough uh, to have nothing but air in there. Just air, right? Don't put any peanuts or anything like that because all that stuff when it's being shipped around um, can damage the piece. Um, I've done that technique before and it, it, it's worked out for me. Um, but, you know, every, every uh, situation is going to require, uh, you know, a different uh, solution, a uh, different consideration. Uh, let's see here. Is there any more questions? Let's take a look here. Uh, someone asked about the height, the height from the floor uh, to the center of the art piece. Um, that is, uh, I believe, um, I need to check my facts again, but I'm pretty sure that is the ADA, the American with Disabilities Act height. Um, it is a height that uh, can accommodate people in wheelchairs along with shorter, uh, shorter people. It's a good general height. You know, obviously if you're on the extremes of either of the height, it's not gonna work out for you. If you're like seven foot two, then you're gonna think it's too low. But if you're four foot one, you may think it's too high still, I, I don't know. Um, or if you're a child or something like that, you might be straining your neck to look at it. But it is a kind of a good general height to accommodate uh, most people's tastes. And once again, uh, in your home, you can hang it whichever way you want. Hang it from the ceiling, you know, whatever. <laughs> Do whatever you want in your house. It's your house. It's your art. Uh, you love it the way you want to love it. Uh, what else do you guys got for me? I've been doing this for a long, long time, so I got a lot of uh, a lot of solutions. Um, I could even go into slightly more technical stuff. Um, let's say you want to hang a very heavy piece of art. This is a fantastic product uh, from, what is the name of the brand? Toggle. I believe it's the Toggle Toggler or Toggle brand. Um, this anchor is great for hanging TVs, hanging, um, hanging mirrors, uh, hanging shelves. Um, yeah. These things can, let's see if you get into the camera, if you can see that, these things can hang like up to 250 pounds or something like that. I, I lost the packaging for this one, so I don't remember all the specifics. Um, but you can hang some really heavy weight stuff on this. The downside is that you have to make a quarter, uh, a half inch hole in your wall to be able to use this, uh, this system. But once you hang it, you're good. <laughs> <laughs> You're good. Uh, this is pretty close, as good as hanging it straight into the stud. Yeah, and it's the uh, toggle brand from Lowe's. And you know what? I'm going to go ahead and take advantage of this moment and um, 
put some of those links in the comments. Uh, in the chat. Here we go. Um, yeah, once again, some of my uh, favorite uh, vendors in town uh, and or online. Um, you can find a lot of these products, you know, if you want to save some money, try to buy in bulk and maybe you want to uh, order it online from maybe Uline, uh, Uline or Granger. Uh, Granger uh, has physical locations here in town, but often you have to buy them in bulk. So you're not going to be able to buy just one box. You're going to have to buy uh, 15 boxes or something like that. Over here, real quick. I'll be right there. There we go. Yeah. And so those are links to some of uh, some of my favorite vendors uh, and some of the products that you may have seen. Uh, one of the links on there is from Gaylord. Uh, Gaylord makes uh, archival uh, museum grade products. If you're going to be storing your art for you know more than a month, um, you know you should really consider putting it in proper archival products. Um, yeah, so and Gaylord's a good source for that. Also, Dickwood. Dickwood has a lot of really great archival products as well. Um, yeah. Let's see here. Okay. Um, yeah, if you guys don't have any more questions, um, you know, this once again was a very basic class and um, uh, feel free to contact me. I'll go ahead and put, uh, put my email in here in the, uh, in the comments section or the chat section. Um, if you have some uh, more specific uh, questions, I might be able to help you out or at least steer you in the right direction. Um, sometimes things get so complicated that it's really just not worth your trouble. Uh, go ahead and contact an art installation service. Um, one of my favorites is Austin Art Services. Um, they've helped out Big Medium, big medium uh, before in the past, and they're a group of uh, very talented uh, and careful art installers. Um, and there's several others as well. But uh, yeah, if there's no other questions, uh, I may just wrap it up. Let me check the Q&A one more time. Absolutely, thank you. Thank you, thank you for joining and, and uh, hearing about this. Um, this uh, video is being recorded. This webinar is being recorded and we'll uh, post it on one of our uh, outlets at some point. <laughs> We're juggling quite a few things here at Big Medium. We're getting ready for the uh, Austin Studio Tour and also the Texas Biennial. So uh, yeah, we're doing the best we can and we have a very small staff, um, but we're here to serve the Austin art community. We love you guys and miss you terribly. And we're looking forward to opening up like normal very soon. All right, well, having said that, I'm gonna go ahead and say adieu. Thank you all so very much. Thank you. And I can't wait to see y'all in person during the Austin Studio Tour. Good luck, y'all.